it's Showtime uh, originally approached me with a sort of general idea that they were interested in exploring the topic of missing and murdered indigenous women, um, which I knew nothing about at the time. So uh, I brought Roselle into this project, um, and together we um, we decided to focus on Bighorn County, Montana, for a couple of different reasons. One. Um, is that uh, the way that we work as filmmakers, it's very important um, to be able to put a human face on an issue. We're not just making a documentary about the issue, we're making a documentary about people that happen to be going through this. Um, we find that that's the best way to be able to connect to an audience outside of the Native community. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, take that away. Yeah, so when I was first brought on the project, um, I initially was hesitant because so oftentimes, you know, um, there's this uh, kind of, there, there's this issue within media itself of like extractive storytelling. And so after talking with Matthew and uh, really hearing him explain that this was going to be a collaboration, um, and because I myself had always felt so strongly about this issue, uh, being a Native girl, growing into a Native woman, this fear of being stolen, disappearing, or being murdered has always been my reality. And um, I have always included an element of social justice in, in my work. So to be part of directing this this documentary series was just an extension of something that I was already already doing as a director and filmmaker. If I did this myself um, as the director, male, white male, you know, going into the community, it's, it is extractive um, because it's not, it, it wasn't an issue that was close to me. Um, uh, and I would have met these families um, to take their stories and, and leave. Um, and it was very important for me and for us ultimately to, you know, to, to bring on as many indigenous filmmakers as we could on this project. Rizal and I are directing it. We have um, Ivan and Ivy McDonald, who are two producers. Um, uh, and, you know, everyone here can speak um, to the idea of representation, but it was, it, was important, um, it was important for us to do this correctly. Well, and honestly, if Matthew was doing this on his own, I don't think many of us would have, would have joined it, not to say getting to know him now, we, we love him, but it, it's that it was, for me, it was having uh, a Native woman as a director. It was having um, Ivan and Ivy McDonald who have experienced this issue personally with their family as producers that made me trust that the storytelling was going to be done in a way that would lift the voices of the families and, and make it um, grounded in um, in that truth, so that was important. I think they did a really amazing job with that. As a, as a working journalist in Bighorn County, um, covering m cases like this, especially the cases that are covered in this um, docu-series, I was covering these cases as they were initially happening, and I saw what I like to call parachute journalism, you know, um, large enterprises parachuting in and getting the story and parachuting out. Um, one particular one came in and covered a story and then did nothing with it until another girl went missing months later and then they used the first girl's story as background for the second girl's story. If that second girl didn't go missing, the first girl's story wouldn't have been told. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of um, extractive journalism that Roselle's talking about is um, it's only used to sell news it's only used for the for the commodity for that benefit of of clicks of likes of you know selling papers of ratings on tv and um when i was first approached by matthew i got a phone call and um introduced himself and i'm like oh god okay here comes another one i think you blew me off three times I did. before i actually pinned you I, down. I blew off matthew three times and then i, I did some <laughs> homework looked up the production company, watched previous work of his, and then was like, okay, this guy's legit. Um, but that's what I would end up doing with a lot of these um, journalists and filmmakers that were coming in, is I'd have to do a lot of homework on them. Because a lot of them were just coming in, and you know, getting what they needed in a brief cross-section and getting the hell out. Mm -hmm. 
and for Matthew and Roselle and the team to come in and spend, you know, upwards of 18 months coming back to the community and telling stories and making connections is is something that shouldn't, you know, be ignored. That's a big commitment to make to come into our community and make those kinds of connections and tell people's genuine stories in a way that is authentic and allowing them to tell their stories in a way that is authentic and honest and truthful and um, authentic is not something that we get a lot of. And I think it's about building relationships, um, what, which is part of why the families that are in this docuseries were able and willing to, to tell their story. Um, you know, and, and it, for us as Native people in, in our communities, that's, you know, that's what we are. We're, we're relatives. We treat each other as relatives. We're families. And so building relationships is foundational. So when you have uh, you know, people coming in for 18 months dedicating their lives to telling the story, that's, that's not just telling a story. That's building a relationship with this community. And, and we don't see that very often in Indian country. And yeah, and as an Oglala, Lakota, Dene woman, uh, not being Apsalge or Northern Cheyenne, uh, I had a responsibility to uh, respectfully introduce not only myself but the crew in this production and why we were doing it. And you know that's something that you don't get if you're non-native. You don't know how to approach other native folks and make the right introductions. And so that is why it was so important for me to come on this project to collaborate and do it in an appropriate and an ethical way, right? And at the end of the day, you know, when, I, when we were going in and meeting relatives or the families, and it was like looking at myself, you know, looking at my own relatives, at my own aunties and uncles, and there's no way I couldn't do justice to this series um, because I was looking at my own relatives. Um, one thing I want to add to what Luella was talking about as far as parachute journalism goes, um, or extractive journalism, um, you know, uh, by being there for a day or two, it's like you're not ultimately going to be telling the correct story. Um, I think there was, with a lot of these cases, there was this idea sort of put out in the media that there is some great mystery going on here, that Native women are just disappearing. And where are they going? Um, as if they were like abducted by aliens. But the thing that was so eye-opening to me after spending 18 months with Rizal in Montana is, is like we, I fully, truly understood the real story and all of the factors that were going on. And I think our series reflects that. Um, it reflects the time that went into making it because we were able to um, tell the complete story um, in a way that if we had popped in for a, a couple of days, we never would have gotten to the root of it.